This year has been a lot about accountability and a lot about ownership. Mm -hmm. So I think today uh, episode sticks to that theme a lot. I don't know why it's so prevalent at the beginning of this year, but I guess that's what's been on our heart and what needs to be said. So mm -hmm. this episode is about complete ownership on where you're at in your life because the only constant in every situation is you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think um, just like with ownership of a business or ownership of a car, we put more ownership on the material things than we do on ourself and our spirituality, which is interesting. Um, we take better care of our cars and our business sometimes than we do ourself and our spirituality. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big thing when it comes to ownership. When you go into business or you say, all right, who's the owner of this company? That person usually has a lot of responsibility. You see what he's built. You see the, the time he or she has built or you see the, the growth of the company. It's because that person put time in. They stayed up late hours. They stayed up and and crunched numbers. They, they dealt with putting fires out. They dealt with negativity, all these things because they took ownership of this thing and it was that important to them that they were like, I don't care no matter what. I'm here for it. I'm a ride for it. But when it comes to us and ourselves, we tend to not do that sometimes. <laughs> and it's funny, like in every instant in life, it's easy to identify like, hey, it may be this or it may be that person. But like, for example, if if somebody was investigating a crime mm -hmm. and in every instance with every piece of evidence, you saw one name keep popping up, mm -hmm. you would think. Okay, maybe this the suspect. Maybe this person yeah. has something to do with it. Yeah. So I don't, why don't we look at the results in our life the same? Yeah. If every result we get, we that common denominator in that result. Yeah. Why don't we look within and be like, hey, maybe it's me. We do it with everything else. If it's it, a mystery, yeah, if it's it a crime else, yeah. doc, if it's a, it, like, hey, it's that person. Mm-hmm. But what about you? Yeah. You showing up in the evidence of your life. <laughs> you showing <laughs> yeah. up in every situation in your life. Yeah. Every result you get, you there. Yeah. So we got to ask ourselves, what are we doing? So the three things, I think life is like 90% us, 10% mm -hmm. stuff out of our control. Yep. But the three things we do control is our reactions. Yep. Our effort. Yep. And then our, our our willingness, our our the actions we take. Mm -hmm. So reactions, actions, and effort. And I think you got to start asking yourself. One thing I wrote down: really take accountability and ask yourself how have how, how have I held myself back? Yeah. Like and be really honest. Mm -hmm. Like be honest. Be like, well, maybe I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I do get motivated and start. I get easily distracted and mm -hmm. I stop. Or maybe once it get too hard, I just stop. I give up. Yep. But it's almost an excuse in our generation because we have everything. We have the internet. We got Google. We now got chat GPT. Mm -hmm. I can just do it. Mm -hmm. It's like we have every single resource that all the generations before us didn't have necessarily. And we still make excuses and still point blame and play victim. Mm -hmm. Like one good example of like, you can see way life turns out. If y'all seen the Dream Team documentary that was on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Before Kobe Bryant got there, they was losing. Kobe Bryant gets there. And it's a night. The whole team, they go out, they go partying. By the time they get back from partying, it's like 5 a.m., and they say Kobe Bryant is is sweaty in the lobby and going to another workout. And they're like, what's going on? He's like, he's been working out while they've been partying. Mm -hmm. He set the tone. Mm -hmm. And then that everyone else started coming to them workouts 5 a.m. Except for one, Kobe Bryant was like, man, that's just too early for me. Uh, Carmelo. Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, mm -hmm. my bad. Oh, that's too early for me. Look at their careers. Kobe Bryant goes down as one of the greatest players of all time. Arguably, Multiple arguably top 10. Arguably mm -hmm. top five. Uh, arguably, arguably top five. Carmelo ain't nowhere in the top ten. Yeah. Nowhere in arguments of top five. Mm -hmm. Never won a championship. Mm -hmm. And you see the difference. Yeah. 
It's effort. It's effort. That's all Kobe Bryant did more than Carmelo. He put in way more effort. He took accountability. He made he made his actions speak louder than his words, and he you saw the proof in the pudding. And to boss it back off of that, what ownership requires you to do is make a decision. Yeah, it requires you to make a decision and ask questions, mm-hmm. which is something that we ask a lot of other people questions. Mm-hmm. Is don't ask ourselves questions like. Even, you know, we, we, we joke about it all the time when we talk about like, oh, you know, maybe this person doesn't text back or this person didn't do that. You, we have to also start asking ourselves, why am I dealing with this type of person? What is causing me to keep going back to these same patterns? <laughs> how can I avoid this situation altogether? Or how can I make this situation better? What could I say? Like, you got to ask yourself and take ownership of the fact that maybe sometimes, even if the person is in the wrong, are you allowing that wrong? Are you not taking ownership of like, hey, maybe I'm dealing with some stuff and I need and I'll just keep going back to the same pattern for a reason. Like, there's always questions you can ask yourself, even if you feel like it's not your fault at all. There's always questions you can ask yourself to either help yourself or hey, maybe even help the other person. You know, you could you could even help the other person, but like you said, it's 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 effort, it's decision making and it was something oh, and I was going to say also, when you take ownership, it's a weight off your shoulder. It's freeing cuz now you're like, I know what the problem is. <laughs> I, could, I know what the issue is. It's like when you've been walking around and you can't figure something out. You got a problem. You, what's going on? And then you like, oh, no, oh, that was my fault. That was my bad. I, okay, I could have done something. Oh, huh, all right. Well, now the responsibility is on you and not on somebody else because you don't like playing a waiting game and waiting on somebody else to figure it out. If if you take ownership, you immediately can figure it out and you immediately can take uh, action to. To help that situation. Basically, what what you're saying is, the more questions you ask, you'll eventually be led to the answer. Yeah. Like the answer either reveal itself, mm-hmm. or you'll get to it by answering each question you ask yourself. Like Lauren put it best on her episode when she was the boss, her employees would come to her with every problem, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they would just straight come to her as soon as a problem happened. Mm-hmm. So she had to learn that. When they came, instead of giving them the answer, she just started asking them questions. Mm-hmm. And eventually, they would get to their answer that they needed. And eventually, they stopped coming to her with every single problem. Yeah. They were able to identify it through that process. And they know she's just going to ask me a question, so let me just try to figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and most of the time, you will. Mm-hmm. So it's like, even even say with your patterns, like sometimes people fall in dating the same type of person. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself, what is it about you that is attracting that type of person? Mm -hmm. Or what is it about you that is allowing that person, as you said, to treat you that way? Because people are going to treat you the way you allow them to treat you. Absolutely. They're not just going to treat you anyway, but if you allow them them to manipulate you or stuff, a lot of people take advantage of that. Look at at the world we live in today. All online, you hear from both sides. Women do this. Men do that. Women need to do this. Men need to do that. Nobody is saying... I need to do this. I need to do that so I don't allow these people to do this. You don't see that a lot. You you, you definitely see the why why guys like this and why girls like this and why and it's like, "All right, we got to start looking at both sides and being like, uh, maybe it's me." Because it's easy. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's, it's easy to blame someone else for your shortcomings or your problems than to blame yourself. Like, that's really hard. Yeah. Because that's going to involve real true change and real work. Yeah. And a lot of people, frankly, don't want to put in that work. Yeah. There's things I haven't wanted to work on that I had to work on. Like, hey, I got to get better. I was very impatient. Had to get better. I would do things. I, I just had to get better. But yeah. I'm always self-aware and always trying to improve. But most people don't want to live that route. They take the easy way out. But yeah. my thing is, either you're going to do the hard work and then life is going to get easier, or you're going to take the easy route and life is going to get harder. Your you, can't, you can't avoid it. Either way, it's going to yeah. come head to head. Yeah. So I'd rather do the hard work and make my life easier yeah. than go the other way around. But another thing I want to say about effort, because that's the one thing we control, mm-hmm. it's easy I remember reading this from Mark Cuban one time, Mm -hmm. and this stuck with me, and it came back to me when I was thinking about this. He was like, it's easy to measure effort by how many hours you're putting in, but he said that's the worst way to measure effort. Mm -hmm. He said, measure effort by goal setting and getting results.